Hello and welcome back to Elden Ring and my first build video in quite a while actually. Thanks to the recent update of 1.06, we've had some interesting meta changes that have made different things a bit more relevant and worth testing and playing around with. Number one on that list for me was Morgoth's Cursed Sword. This is a really cool weapon in its design and the fact that it's it's Morgoth's sword, you know, he's, it's that staff that he beat you up with when you fought him as Margit and then unleashed in full in trade in the real fight. As an arcane weapon that has blood loss buildup as part of its default set and that incredible Ash of War from the fight, which was made better in a recent patch so it comes out even quicker, and then the base combat of the weapon has been improved in 1.06. They've kind of increased the speed of the weapon. Now, as a curved greatsword, it has a really good and pretty damn quick considering it's a heavy weapon light attack combo, but what they've done is they've improved the speed of the heavy attack as well which really cool with this weapon with it being a curved greatsword it actually has a heavy follow-up where you do a double spin hit right and that can be very damaging that can actually break and stagger uh, enemies in pve so you could hit a boss or an enemy with that and that'll break their poise so that being even faster is quite good now in pvp it's quite hard to land that and if you do hit it, of course, it's going to do really, really good damage. What you can do, actually, is do, say, a quick version of the heavy. So what I'm doing is I'm just tapping the heavy attack, and then I'm doing the full charge as a follow-up to get that out quickly. That kind of spacing can throw people off, and it can work really well for a trade. But there's another detail to do with this weapon that's quite interesting that people might not realize. As it is a cursed blood weapon using that Ash of War, it has fire damage, even though it's not listed here. It just says physical, and then we have the arcane scaling improvement improving the power of the blood loss buildup. So basically this strike, you see how it kind of lights up with fire, that is doing fire damage. This is exciting because we can actually improve the power of fire in multiple ways. Say with flame grant me strength, that incantation, improving my physical and my fire, and then a flask of wondrous physic using the classic flame shrouding cracked tear. So we can take what is a nice Ash of War that comes out quick and does some good damage into a really dangerous attack. Combine that with something like swarm of flies in pvp and as you can see what it does is it creates this sort of situation where they have to choose am i going to take the bleed of a swarm of flies or at least the build up or am i going to try to avoid that and run into the ash of war if they're foolish enough to actually try to trade with it or get caught by it as you can see the burst is ridiculous ridiculous it is very effective and it's kind of like the the basis of this build in pvp if not for something like swarm of flies it's going to be hard to actually catch people with the ash of war unless you're willing to trade and take the hit yourself of course we don't have to worry about that at all in pve where again say a boss where we can absolutely just spam the ash of war and burst something into oblivion especially if it's weak to bleed especially if it's weak to fire especially if it's weak to both which by the way can also stagger much like a heavy attack so yeah in pve the ash of war is absolutely ridiculous but another aspect of the patch you might not have thought about is the new light load rolling basically what they've done is they've made it so the weight affects the rolling distance now uh, so let's say we're on this brick right here we can now roll much further while in light load which is why i'm wearing morgoth's like chest piece here the fellow man cloak and some very light uh gloves and pants this allows me to roll really really far nice to have in pve sure but in pvp it's actually really good you can close the gap on a target pressuring them remaining next to them as they panic or try to avoid you or maybe during a trade you could stay on top of them and then use this as a roll catch or to really mess with them mentally it's very fun instead of just you know sprinting at them permanently so you can be doing these spam rolls and then do the follow-up attack with which is pretty damn good with this weapon to trade or catch someone in a roll catch in a surprising way so this setup i found really fun in pvp and the more i kind of experimented with it i made some slight changes and yeah it became quite effective there's a lot of situations where i simply do the swarm of flies then run at them and do the ash of war and they take a nice chip of the damage or try to trade or get caught by it and either die or take a massive amount of damage. Now, it's not clear in the actual patch notes, but they say they've added some changes to the weapons and then don't necessarily specify clearly which have got the benefits. They may have increased the attack speed of the light attack with this weapon, but it's hard to say. It was always pretty good and it still catches people in PvP all the same. They don't seem to expect me to swing a third or fourth time after the first and second and end up walking into it. Because this weapon is like nice and long, the range is great for that type of trading. 
In regards to chasing people with rolling and roll attacks, there's actually a talisman I've not got equipped right now that improves that. It's the Crucible Feather Talisman. It literally says improves dodge rolling, but increases the damage taken. Now, the problem with talismans like this that make you take more damage is that they really need to have good value. So, for example, I could run the Fire Scorpion Charm, and that'll increase my fire attack, making my Ash of War stronger. That's great, and you could use it in PvE, where it's not going to be that much of a problem. But in PvP, Wearing one of these things leads to you being one or two shot. You are super vulnerable when you have this damage negation. So while the idea of improving our now newly improved dodge roll is nice, sadly, I just don't think this is relevant and worth in PvP. And even in PvE, I don't know, it's pretty suspect. But it's something to consider and test if you want it. But with that showcase of both PvE and PvP in my explanations, let's actually talk about the build. So of course I'm using Morgoth's Cursed Sword and as it is a weapon that comes with some base arcane scaling, we can just work that in. I wouldn't really recommend you go over 50 arcane because the scaling is not great beyond that. And even then, 50 might be a bit overkill. Generally the rule for a Bloodlust buildup weapon is if you can get around 100 Bloodlust buildup, it's pretty good. But lower than that, you've got to work something else in to get it to consistently go off in, in PvP at least. That's why we're running the Dragon Communal Seal. This is an S-scaling arcane seal and it weighs nothing, which is great. So it's just the obvious pick for an arcane build. As I've shown, that's a great way to use Swarm of Flies as a arcane spell, since this only requires 16, with a low FP cost of 14. Flame Grant Me Strength is obviously just a classic in every damn build ever. Increasing your physical damage for 15 faith is very effective. But then of course, also increasing your fire damage, that's great here too. Because we are running that Ash of War and kind of spamming it and it costs 20 FP, you're gonna want some FP to work with. I've got 16 mind, which puts me at exactly 100 FP. But try to think of it in 20s. 120 FP, 140 FP, that's generally what you're going for. This main source of damage for basic swings is going to come from decks. So we have 55 decks where we have that sort of soft break point and then as much vigor as you can really get away with and endurance to work with uh, light load rolling. Of course, you don't need to do light load rolling. It's just fun to do because it's a new feature of the patch. But wearing some heavier armor, running a bit more endurance, that's of course well worth it if you want it. For talismans, I'm running the Dragon Quest Great Shield because it's just a classic. You run this in damn near every build. Reducing the physical damage you take is wonderful. We're using a weapon that is primarily damaging for its Ash of War, so obviously the Shard of Alexander is going to be vital. To get my light load with better armor, I'm running the Great Jar's Arsenal. It's raising my maximum equip load by like as much as possible, but you could replace this for something else, like the Erd Tree's Favor, which is going to give us equip load, but also health and stamina if you're running more endurance. Lastly, as this is a bleed weapon, with every bleed build under the sun, the Lord of Blood's Exaltation is kind of what you want to at least run. And then there's also the white mask, which you can wear as a headpiece if you're willing to go to a medium load roll. Increasing your damage will bleed even more. As I've mentioned, don't forget to run your Flask of Wondrous Physic with the Flame Shrouding Cracked Tear to increase our fire damage even more. With this build, we have some seriously impressive burst on the Ash of War, an effective weapon with good range, quick attacks, or the newly even faster heavy attacks with its unique combo. And not to mention, it's a really cool looking sword. So I'm really happy to see this be a bit more relevant now. Overall, my conclusion is the weapon definitely feels stronger than before, right? Obviously, its Ash of War was made pretty damn fast in a previous patch, and now combined with its faster attacks, it feels good in PvP. I won't call it the strongest weapon in PvP, it's not brokenly overpowered or something, but it's fun and it's viable, which wasn't always the case for this weapon. It certainly deserves to at least be relevant, and it certainly is in PvE and PvP. But yeah, that's the video, that's the build. Let me know what you think. Would you like to see more patch 1.06 builds and stuff to do with the update? Let me know in the comments or just drop a like on the video. For now though, I've been Hollow, you've been you. Thank you so much for watching and we'll see you next time. Josh, Cotton, and Hollow with the videos Dropping the humor like a hammer on your tippy toes Bringing entertainment on a daily arrangement To take our insanity and turn it into entertainment Yes, I said entertainment twice To reiterate that it is nice To look into your faces on a mostly daily basis When you let us in your homes to make the whole world our stage Is, uh, goodbye